Hi everyone, welcome to episode four of MotorServe TV. I'm very pleased today to welcome the Sharma family who are here to talk to me. The Sharma family recently filmed for BBC's Back in Time series, finding themselves in the historical hot seat, reliving 50 years of British Asian history, all told through the story of the vibrant and ever-changing Birmingham city. Hi guys, thank you so much for coming today. It's so good to have you here. Uh, so just for the uh, benefit of the viewers and the audience, could you just tell us a little bit about yourselves? Yeah, um, I'm Vishal, Vishal Sharma, um, based here in Birmingham, Solihull. Hill. Um, I've been here pretty much all my life, age five, working in the healthcare industry. And um, thank you for having us here. Yeah, Fantastic. thank you for having us. My name is Alicia Sharma. I'm 21 and I've just graduated from university. Fantastic. Hi Cameron, so my name's Manisha and I'm the mum of the family and we live in Solihull and uh, I work for the NHS. Fantastic, thank you so much and uh, you probably recognise them because they are superstars now. So it's, the, so it's the BBC Back in Time series that you guys just finished filming and you've you know, just come out the back of. So how did that all come about, like, you know, from your, you know, what you do for a job? How did you kind of, how did that yeah. all kind of arise? I think that's probably a question for Manisha. I think she was the uh, yeah. instigator or oh, the really? culprit. I, I so. think I'll answer that one. <laughs> <It's you. laughs> um, it just so happened that we had a friend's WhatsApp group that had yeah. a, a, a little uh, a, uh, intro, wasn't it? Of They were looking for a family in Birmingham to do this yeah. Back in Time programme. And I absolutely love Back in Time. I've watched all of the previous ones and it was just, they were looking for an Asian family yeah. and from Birmingham and then the, those that remembered the 90s and daytime gigs. And I, honestly, I'm not a spontaneous person, but I clicked the link. I went to the application form yeah. and before you knew it, I'd already applied. <laughs> <laughs> so how did, uh, how did everyone react to that? Like when, what happened then? Did you get like cast? Did someone? When you up no, and we, we didn't even realise that we were probably going through an interview process. Um, I just happened to uh, let the family know in passing that I'd submit to, uh, uh, yeah, submit an application for something, but they yes. didn't know. Well, you know. Mum claims that she she mentioned it to us, but no one has the <laughs> recollection of that <laughs> moment. So no. it was just, oh, so I did a thing, and now we're getting yeah. phone calls. Yeah. So. I'm looking for the police, thinking the police are going to turn up, she's done yeah. a thing, but no, <laughs> she should actually apply. Mm. Yeah, I don't actually remember seeing, but it was the right thing to do at the time. Nobody had seen the application except me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'd seen really the show, really. we had, when she mentioned back in yeah. time, we had seen previous versions of it, because there's been about six other versions, yeah. ranging from the school to Brixton, and so we were fans of the show, not as much as Manisha, but we did love the whole concept. Yeah, no, it's really good. I, I really enjoy it as well, I like watching it, and then especially because obviously this one, obviously I know you guys, so, so it's special in itself, <laughs> but obviously being of Asian heritage and my parents moving to Birmingham as well in the 70s, a lot of it, a lot, a lot of the stories, a lot of it rang true, so that was really, really good. Yeah. It was actually, yeah, quite emotional to watch, yeah, actually. It was, yeah. I mean, it was a weird process because I think we had a couple of, because we were right in the middle of the pandemic. Yeah. Um, we had a couple of telephone interviews, FaceTime, mm. Zoom, and then they, some of the producers, commissioners came to the house to, I don't think to interview us, but I think they were watching us interact with each other and with our parents, you know, in case we come out with profanity swearing over the line, but <laughs> we don't, we're not like that. And, but I think there were, it was an indirect form, see how we engage and, and about two months later, I think we got a phone call saying we'd like you to be our family. Like, oh. Excellent. At that point, the panic really set at, in. Yeah, yeah because at, at no point had we um, sort of realised that we were part of an interview process. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was all very natural, just yeah. kind of just progressive. Yeah. So when when you did, uh, what happened then? Did you have to like go? Did you like move away from home for like a month? Like, how long did it yeah, take? Yeah, I mean, there was a bit of a gap after we found the, found out the news, and then. Um, Part of the whole process is 
they don't tell you anything because they're not meant to because a lot of the whole shows around the elements of surprise yeah. we had a rough idea of start dates and filming and mm. we thought initially we were going to go and visit a set or something but yeah. i think about a week before we realized we weren't visiting anyway we were going to be living somewhere as part of the set <laughs> and that was a bit of a realization wasn't yeah. it Alicia? And oh my god so, oh okay so we were told to pack our bags clothes leave your 2021 life yeah, behind yeah. And, and it's that point it really dawned on us actually you know this is you know even the location of where they were having the house was kept to us pretty much in the morning we just knew it was came yeah. Yeah. to take us yeah. really yeah not Alan Sugar's black taxi <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it was a black taxi and they took us to not even to the house um to the production office where we had to get changed into our 1950s. And I think yeah, in day, the very first episode was only myself and Akash, you guys came the day after. Yeah. So Because you were the, the male. Absolutely. Yeah, the first, like, yeah, which I think back yeah. in the 1950s, or yeah. when the first generation yeah. came, that's how it was. It was normally the men that came first. Yeah. So me and Akash were recreating yeah. that scene. And I think part halfway through filming the mid morning, we actually ended up at the house. And like, well, this is your house. We're like, oh my God. This yeah. is where we're going to be. So and there was a lot of elements of surprise to the whole thing. Yeah. And that first house was like really basic, wasn't it? It was like the, the most. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Uh, reaction. To it. <laughs> yeah, I think he's still traumatised. <laughs> yeah, I just share a bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But, but even that was a learning curve for us. I mean, you know, uh, my parents came in the seventies, as, as did um, uh, Manisha's sixties, seventies. Yeah. I had no idea the whole con concept of hot bedding where four or five men would top and tail on a mattress. Yeah. You know, you would have thought, I would have thought I would have known these things, but I had no idea. Yeah. So when we were having that conversation, it was a realization that, wow, this is what reality is. And if you, if you remember the first episode, we interviewed two local people who'd been there a very long time. Yeah. And they shared their stories of hot bedding and sharing, you know, a bed of five people to a mattress and just trying to imagine that, what that must have been like for them. It's just a real revelation. It's a humbling to understand the sacrifice that generation made. I know it's all about the Wi-Fi, isn't it? If you haven't got the Wi-Fi, <laughs> it's it. It's like game over. <laughs> but it's like, but they're used to like a hot bed between shifts in there, like so they're yeah. used to rolling shifts, nighttime, daytime. The swap over, so you'd have five yeah. in a bed, and I think at some point in the middle of the night, yeah. there was almost a call out to say, right, you lot up, next lot in. Yeah. Yeah. So you literally moved away, like you had to go away from home. Was it how long was the filming for? Was it like a month? Yeah, yeah we stayed in that house for just under a month and yeah. I mean, they took our phones off us. We had no modern technology. We really were living in the time. So those mattresses yeah. on the floor, we really were sleeping, sleeping in them. Yeah. In the 50s and 60s, we were eating rations, basically. Yeah, yeah, food, yeah. And at yeah. one point, we were eating dal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think just the withdrawal <laughs> process from you know yeah. not having your technology, which we're yeah. so used to. It's just our phones yeah. are glued into our hands. That was yeah. us a shock. I was going to say, how did you cope? Not very was well it, initially. Yeah, withdrawal symptoms initially. I think my yeah. parents were probably worse than my really? brother and yeah, I. I, like, yeah. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true you don't realise how much time we spend just looking down rather than looking at someone. Yeah, so yeah. it was it, as weird as it sounds. It was first day, well, first day like anything. Yeah. Something withdrawn. You're like, oh my god. What we're going to say to each other? Do I know you guys, yeah. right? But then actually, about after a day or so, our faces were the emoji. Yeah, yeah. our faces. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they're yeah. actually very nice people. <laughs> now you've actually got to know them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but what, it was the whole realization that actually how simplistic life really was. Yeah. I mean, that kitchen that you had to experience. I mean, I really felt for you. I mean, having to, having to work. I think in I think the whole thing was a, a steep learning curve and yeah. um, a bit of a reality check for all of us. Yeah. Um, humbling. Um, and it's not a time you'd really want to have back again. Yeah, because it course. was tough, you yeah. know. No, it is because like the same kind of story. My, my my parents came over in the seventies, so my dad came first. Then he called back, they set up home, and then he called back. Wow. So it's exactly the same. So when you were kind of running through it all, mm. I just remember the stories my dad told me of, of like yeah how hard it was back then, and uh, I used to be like yeah it wasn't that bad, <laughs> and now it's like. Yeah. You actually see it, visualise it. But it's yeah, that it's resilience, cool. you're yeah. saying that, that yeah. they, I think they really were a steely generation where yeah, to think, you know, almost 80, 90% of their wages mm. went back home. Yeah. You know, it's like, it wow. Was, yeah. And they were prepared to self-sacrifice and live on absolutely nothing just to make sure that back home everyone was provided for, or whether it was weddings, mm. running, setting up businesses, yeah. or to get them over 
that yeah. that costs money, but they had that resilience, which you know, it's it's, it's really it's really humbling to see how all of them, all that generation, they just yeah. got on with it and they still did it. No gripes, happy to sleep, you know, for the people on a bed, working three, you know, sleeping two hours a week, and just getting on with it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So we're in the filming, like in the whole series, obviously, it must have got better as it was getting into like the modern eras. So was it just getting better? More easier to film and everything else like that as it kind of moved into the future? Being in front of the camera, that got easier because you get yeah. used to it from a filming perspective. In terms of, I use the word mod cons, but obviously as time progresses, you get more gadgets and gizmos and your luxuries get better. Yeah, I think when our, all our, our parents, we first had a generation. We that worked. Yeah. Yeah. That was progress <laughs> in yeah. itself. Yeah. 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 And but then it, mixing bowls and, and, and little things that got yeah. better and better and the cooker advantage. got better and, yeah. you know. And, and pot noodle came into existence. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, <laughs> it lives off those. Yeah. <laughs> we had a shop so we could go in and take sweets and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So that was good and take the crisps from the shop. So that was nice. <laughs> Bags were a lot bigger then as well. <laughs> they were, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But just that whole, you could see how from that generation, mm. how because by the time 70s, I would say, right, 60s, 70s, they'd bought families over. Mm. So it was less about sending money home, it was more about establishing a life here. And yeah. through that process, a lot of it was around actually why we're working for somebody else, you know, in foundries or factories. And mm. it was more around setting up for themselves. And you could see by the 70s, you know those luxuries you know the yeah. fancy um, tissue boxes and yeah. the plastic on the sofas and <laughs> the, the the you know the display cabinet which you dare not touch because yeah. if you touched it somebody would break your hand you know yeah, yeah. all those small things every house had one I right? remember in the time, <laughs> yeah, yeah, in china and the cupboard that yeah, we never yeah. used <laughs> but what, what did you think what changed for you from the 60s 50s and 60s anything that you think back then actually not was better yeah, I think you could definitely feel the shift from generation to generation of just feeling more established, more comfortable and yeah, the money going into the luxuries rather than focusing on survival. It was about, okay, we can afford to treat ourselves a little bit and you know, invest in ourselves, which was, which was nice to see. Yeah. And actually, I think a lot of South Asian homes really, they, they still embody that energy of you know, having nice things. I think a lot of people probably still have the setup of the yeah. 80s mm. and 90s living room. Yeah. Of, of the even end. now. Yeah, yeah. Even <laughs> now. Definitely. And even small things, like, I call it small, but it is big in a way. The role of different people in the house yeah. change as well. You know, uh, Alicia wants to comment the role of pretty much where you were in the 50s and 60s to where you got to the 70s. It was a massive shift, wasn't it? Oh yeah, for sure. I think for women. For, for women especially, going yeah. in, I think we were quite frustrated really because mm. we really were living out those roles of, you know, my dad and my brother weren't allowed in the kitchen yeah. and we were doing all of the cooking, cleaning, serving them, taking yeah. the plates away. <laughs> um, they went to work, they went to the factory or they went out and so that, um, time when the two of us were allowed to then go to the like we went out to the cinema yeah you cannot understand how excited we were because it was the <laughs> first time we'd gone out of the house yeah. and so we're like yeah we're coming out <laughs> and then it was this realization that we've got these really groovy clothes on and we're going into the middle of Birmingham City <laughs> Centre um, to the cinema and then it was like who cares? It doesn't matter. They don't know us. We're just getting out of the house. They didn't know you then. No, they do. So out of the show, uh, what were your best bits? Or what are your best memories from it all? Um, for myself, personally, yeah. it was um, probably the 1980s. I love the 90s. Yeah. Probably the one I re re recollect quite easily. Yeah. 70s was a bit too young, but the whole, um, you know, the whole Tobitronic 3Ds and yeah, VCRs yeah. and going to the video shop, which was a big thing for me. Yeah. I used to have one around the corner and to go and try and try and get a 12-weighted film. I was PG, I could only get PG. <laughs> <laughs> Funny things like that, you know, yeah. and the very first dial-up internet, those kind of things yeah. uh, with a long noise in the telephone line. That's it, I go. remember it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that brings back really vivid, but yeah. recent memories for me. Yeah, brilliant. Might be Alicia. Yeah, I think the same, 80s and 90s, just because it is the era where my mum and dad grew up. And actually, yeah. it, I hear about all of their childhood memories, but it was really nice to experience it and see it from yeah. myself. Also see how excited and happy they got, um, just seeing mm. all of the things from their, their childhood. I, you must have had a good time at the day raves. Oh my goodness, I the didn't day know time. They existed. 
I didn't know anything about that, so. I think it came as a bit of a shock to, to mum and dad when we realised <laughs> that we weren't allowed to go yeah. because we had to stand in the shop and we were like, but that was the reason I applied. I thought we'd get to go. And then the kids got to go um, yeah. and they met Bali Sagu and yeah, it was yeah, just yeah. like, oh, we're not going. We're going to stand in the shop. So that was a bit of a shock. Yeah. Um, I think for me, it was, I think the exciting bit was watching them mm. um, ex have those experiences. Yeah. Um, when they had the experience of um, the tape recorder and the video recorder, <laughs> we weren't in that scene. So we were listening to them and yeah. we were laughing so much upstairs, <laughs> listening to them because Akash, we could hear him going, what is, what is this? <laughs> and, and she's going, it's a video. And he's like, so where do I put it? And then they were like, but they were, they were being shown how to record, yeah. but he didn't even know how to play it and which way around to put the video in or which way around to put the oh, tape yeah. in. And it just made us realize how much technology has moved on. Yeah, massively. Um, and that was, it was just yeah. watching those little experiences with them and that they've never And the lack seen of patience, it. it's like, <laughs> what, five minutes just to connect to the internet? Yeah. Dial up. Goodness. You know? You can just set it and go for a cup of tea, yeah, yeah. and then you or, come back and it be connected. Or the, the ringtone dial phones yeah, you yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. They didn't know what to do. Like They tried yeah. to walk with it. Like, no, you can't. It's not cordless. You've got yeah, to yeah. carry it. So that, which was something we took yeah. for granted from our youth. Yeah. They were like, this is, why is it connected yeah. to the wall? Why can't I walk around with it? You know? Or the I television had no remote. So you had to go up to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, just little that. things, but there was such a big yeah. thing because they'd never seen yeah. it and we forgotten that they hadn't seen it as yeah. well. So it was really nice to yeah. watch. I think collectively that it's about us seeing them experiencing what we went through. Yeah. And then also seeing them and ourselves when my mom and dad came on set, them showing their stories and or the vinyl player or yeah. the, the, the set of like plastic on the sofas and them showing the stories. We didn't know how to use the vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> That's also true. Like, <laughs> I was like, no. I think everyone on the set was like, they're gonna scratch all of these. They yeah. have no idea what they're doing. They're like, you just press a button and it will lift itself off. And, it will... yeah, yeah. and we were like trying to put it on and dragging it around and they were like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember as a kid, my dad had a record player. He used to be at the top of the deck. Oh, and you used yeah. to have to like stick it on. And then like you say, you used to do it automatically. You used to just go. Yeah. And scratch it off. That's it. So yeah, yeah, no, I remember that. yeah, yeah. that's it. I think the fifties and the sixties there was a beauty of that time too, of mm. the fact because we didn't have anything Nothing and we appreciated each other so much mm. more. Yeah. It's the and, best. Yeah, we talked to each other, we, you know, played like board games and cards together yeah. because there really was nothing else to do. It was we played that much cards together. Yeah. But it was good because we had a laugh with it and there was so much banter. Yeah. And that I miss that because very quickly in the 70s the television came and even though it was all black and white and it was yeah. the quality was rubbish we still tried to watch it yeah <laughs> yeah i think you just realize that we have so many distractions in our everyday lives and yeah. we don't actually make enough time together so to have that time i think has really strengthened us as a family so, as it must well be a really good bonding like yeah. like you yeah. said at the start like getting to know <laughs> yeah it was oh, like getting to know right. each other all <laughs> over yeah, again yeah, yeah. 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 no i think because everyday life nowadays you know it's hectic like even for ourselves like, with three young kids it's constantly even when you're at home yeah. it's ipads tvs homework clubs yeah, computer everything. games yeah. and homework and all the rest of the stuff and you constantly so you never actually speak no just kind of pass each other in the hallway yeah. so yeah and i bet this is just such a good exercise to go through. So have you found it after you've done it, you're closer now as a family? Do you know each other a lot better? Yeah, I, I think so. In both ways, it's like, I know my parents a bit better because yeah. it was their stories. So yeah. that's been nice just to hear first time from mum when she came in the 70s, what she went through, even though mm. she's told us a million times, but to hear it and then have the visual stuff around it, that's been mm. really nice. And when yeah. my dad came afterwards, um, and then just that appreciation of what that entire generation went for. We had it, but not really until we met people who came to the set, who we interviewed, or as part of the different episodes, the kind of stuff that went through, all the, all the way from the 50s, but even like with the racism and all those different yeah. things, to hear firsthand what it did and how it's affected them and how generations made a difference, I think. Mm. I've taken that, a lot of that, they're taking that away personally as a good reflection point.
Mm. About you. Yeah. My brother and I, we've definitely, I think, we've become closer to our parents, but also our grandparents a, mm. a lot more. We actually make a concerted effort and time to spend with them, to ask them more, understand yeah. more. And we're finding out so much, but I think through that process, we're finding out so much more about ourselves too, yeah. because there's so much that passes down generationally, like little habits or sayings or, you know, just ways we cook in the kitchen that we've just, you know, assembled into our lives and we don't think twice and it's really nice to realise actually I am the product of so many generations of yeah. of experiences and love and it's really lovely. Yeah, no, definitely. I think it's a fantastic opportunity and I think you guys, you know, grabbed it and you made, you made the most of it, so yeah. it's really good. It's been a nice, it's, it's, we always say when people ask, what is it? It's actually, to us, it's a love letter to that generation. Yeah. Just to say, we, we see you, we hear That's you, and, yeah. you know, and a lot of them are getting really old now. So mm. just to have something that captures a moment in time of what they went through, hopefully that's just, if anything, encouraged conversations between yeah. them and their kids. But I think also kids. for the younger generations as well, it's, it's a good history lesson. Definitely. Without it being boring, which yeah. is the reason why I applied in the first place is if you watch any of the Back in Times, who has time to listen to the grandparents or the parents yeah. or, or it, without like, it feeling naggy or, yeah, you know, yeah. boring. Back in our day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah so exactly. then what happens is through this, watching somebody else go through an experience, it's a bit yeah. more of a fun way of watching it. And that's why I think it's, it's really resonated with so many families and children who have watched it with family members yeah. it's because it is a bit more fun and but you're learning so much and and the social historian in there shared so much actual factual information yeah. and then we also learned so much about about birmingham yeah. which we had no idea about like the layers around birmingham, exactly yeah. so the birmingham story the asian story the history yeah. um in an easy to understand way has been really nice, I think, for all of us, hasn't it? No, it's fantastic. And I think they, they, they do it so well, they're so authentic, isn't it? They yeah. take a lot of time, a lot of they do, effort yeah. in setting it all up. There's a lot of really research, is. there's a lot of balance, there's a lot of, they want to make sure they don't oversell a message or undersell it. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of information you can share, so mm -hmm. they have to really, I think yeah. the hardest job is probably the editors, so much information, how yeah. do you distill it to stuff that sells a story? Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, definitely. So I didn't realise, because I thought after it had finished filming, you just kind of go, yeah, not go home or go to a hotel or something, but you literally were yeah. there. Living. Yeah. Living in that. So that was our house. The camera turned off and you kind of had to stay. Yeah. yeah. Living in the 50s. Yeah, well, even then when the camera stopped, they would go home. We yeah. would have to go upstairs yeah. and record our video diary. Of our course, reflections yeah. of the day. Yeah. And then yeah. take our makeup off and then finally stop. So the video oh. diary scenes are, are the ones right at the end of the day and yeah, that's why we really look so tired. battered. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's about a 10, 12 hour day and it's like full on, so we're just so tired by yeah. that point. But it was good, It was we had so much that we'd done in the one day, yeah. be it different that's scenes, different places, about, yeah. so you still have a lot to talk about. Yeah, how you felt and stuff. So kind of all over now. We all saw it, yeah, you shared all there and we were watching it anyway and then like, it's just yeah, so good to know the people on, on the show, so it's excellent. So now it's all finished. How has it changed your life? Is there new opportunities? Is what's coming up in the future? Um, for me, I'm, I've gone back to my day job, which is quite nice, yeah. and, um, <laughs> which is fun. I'm, I'm happy. And you appreciate it now. Yeah, I, I, loved, <laughs> I love the day. I always love my day job yeah. and, you know, this was a moment in time to share that love letter, that generation, and yeah. it's brought our family close and me and my parents all as closer. Will I like to do anything more? If something comes up, yeah, but it's, you know, it's for me, I think it was a real door open more for the kids' generation, yeah. you know? It's nice to get involved in like today and share an experience, meeting loads of people. I think yeah. the biggest thing we've taken away is actually when we're walking down the street, people say, oh my God, you're that people from the show. But then people want to stop and share with you their story about their parents, yeah. their grandparents, and we don't know them, but they feel excited enough and, you know, we feel privileged enough that they want to, and humbled enough that they want to mm. share what their parents' journey was. And I think that's been the biggest takeaway that it's just allowed that conversations and for us to be part of it. It's really nice. Yeah. And yeah, did, I think I heard you say that you, you go to sort of whole town centre now and uh, people stop you in the shop. It's Stratford Road. Yeah. And it was in literally TK Maxx last week, stopped around four times in the shop, weren't we? Yeah. Uh, the people just, they're excited because yeah. they recognise seeing a, 
brand person on TV. Yeah. But more importantly, they, they want to share that they watched it or they spoke to their grandparents after the show and then watched it again. And I think that's a bit that really is, is the heartwarming bit. Yeah. It's not even about us, it's actually, you know what? We've had a chance to connect with someone else, uh, an elder, who probably has a lot to say, but no yeah. one gives him the time. And I think that's been the nicest from my perspective. What about mm. you, Alicia? What, how has it changed for you? I think it's changed the trajectory of our lives. We could have never imagined our lives going this way at all. Yeah. But I think we understand the responsibility of what it means to, to be the family telling this important story that hasn't been told properly before. And we don't take that lightly. And I think we, going forward, would want to keep the, the role going of keeping those conversations you know, in the alive. household, keeping yeah. them alive. And just being those positive role models in the community because whether we like it or not, we, we don't have enough representation in our media and especially positive representation of families who, who do talk and want to do things together, especially yeah. South Asian families. I think you've yeah, seen definitely. sort of famous people on TV and they might have done the odd show or they've done, but you still don't see enough sort of, um, a you don't see many Asian families or like yeah. everyday, <laughs> call us the everyday people, <laughs> you know. Um, and I think it's nice. I think that's what people related to. Definitely. That actually, that's our story as well. We we went, you know, we grew up in Birmingham. We we lived that life, and we've kind of moved up the Stratford Road, as yeah. as everyone else. <laughs> you know, you kind of move up Stratford Road yeah. as as you have worked hard, yeah. you've studied, all of those things that your parents wanted you to do and get yeah. that have that career, and then. A little bit more money, a little bit more for a bigger house or a deposit, yeah. and, and and I think that's a, a typical story for a lot of people, and it's quite nice to yeah. see. And um, I think that's what people related to, and that's what has been reflected back to us. Yeah, definitely. Because I did uh, sociology for a level, so we used to study this, you know, like the actual migration, yeah. you know, where people land, and to see it like on TV like that, and you're know, reliving the history of your generations. But also, and now you can see it with the kind of the new immigrants coming mm. in and yeah. the families and the kind of networks they've got within like the old, basically the old areas. Mm. Yeah. And then they're starting to move out now and they're starting to kind of get that traction. Like yeah, with, yeah. you know, they're setting up businesses, they're doing things and you can just see it kind of yeah. playing out again. And before us, it was obviously the Irish migration. Yeah. So in the 60s, 70s before that. And then they're like, cause obviously we lived in, we've come out to the outer rings, like it's whole kind of Borsal Corner, mm. Hampton Island. And, and we've got all Irish neighbors wow. <laughs> where yeah. we were. So. It's, uh, yeah, and you yeah. can kind of see that we're kind of following yeah. suit and everyone else is kind of, so it's really interesting to see the kind of families turning from. It's a bit, it's a bit sad really, because, you know, back then the families were a lot more close-knit. Yeah, yes. the brothers and sisters, like the cousins and stuff. And then now as we become more nuclear families, I think more we, independent. We, I, yeah. I completely agree with you. Mm. I think we found that in terms yeah. of, even as we had the shop and the feeling of community yeah, exactly. was, was so lovely. When we had, um, for example, the break-in and, and somebody throwing yeah. the brick through the, the, the window, bit, yeah. even though I think uh, the BBC had told the local people mm. that this is going to happen and not to worry and that you'll see the NF sign on the window and everything yeah. else, local people still came and checked if we were okay. Really? Yeah. 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 Because that's, everybody looks out for each other and there were so many local people just standing around. Yeah. Just, even though it was a, they knew it was a, a TV scene. thing yeah, of some yeah, sort, yeah. but they waited till the end to check we were okay, check that it was, it was just pretend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, before they went home, and I thought that was, we were oh, like yeah. really chuffed with that. Um, yeah. And that's the bit that, mm. of community that you don't normally see. Yeah, it's there, but in, we don't see in the urban areas. Much. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's almost like forced yeah. neighborhood watch and residence groups. Isn't we it? know that. So, yeah, yeah, we, we, <laughs> we experience now, but they're kind of like you have to be part of it. Yep. You know, whereas not, back then it was like literally you each other. Yeah, everyone knew each other's names, and 
the shop was like more of a community hub, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. It wasn't just a business. But it those was, are. Was, but but the, in those areas, those are still. Yeah. yeah. I, I would say they still are. Yeah. Those communities definitely. are still hubs, aren't they? Yeah. And they're still working together. That's it, definitely. We all, yeah, we, I visit the area like small East yeah. parking and stuff, like all the time, especially for like wedding shopping and stuff. Yeah. 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 Like <laughs> recently. Everyone knows each other. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah they the do. shops every, every shop knows each other, so that's no, really good. Okay, so now like kind of the, that chapters behind you. Is there anything? Have you got any opportunities? Anything kind of opened up on, from it all? I think we're just kind of trying to keep the momentum alive in yeah. making sure that this story is told. I think it's been a yeah. really important year for the South Asian community. You've got 75 years of partition, 50 years since the South, uh, Ugandan Asian exodus. We had the Birmingham Commonwealth Games. Yeah. You know, so much has been happening around us that, that naturally yeah. opportunities have just come our way because this story is so integral to the British DNA now. And yeah. we're, we're very grateful to be a part of that. Yeah. Because Leicester did a lot for the Ugandan Asian time. Um, yeah. they, they had lots of um, commissioned pieces in the theatre, as well as in the parks and the millas. There were a lot of millas this uh, yeah. summer, um, which gave us opportunities to talk about some of this. We went to them in the audience, but so yeah. many people then met us yeah. and wanted to share their story there as well. The kids have had a great opportunity in radio and sharing some of their stories. Yeah, I've been following so it on been social media, it's been really good. Yeah, so I think more than anything, like the yeah. show has had such an overwhelmingly unexpected positive outcome and yeah. so much positive attention that indirectly it's given us a platform now to keep people's voices yeah. alive. And it's yeah. not about fame for us, I don't think. It's about no. being the, the, the spokespeople, the figureheads for communities that perhaps don't get as much screen time and airtime yeah, and exactly. their voice is heard as much as we'd like. No, mm. fantastic. So, as you're here, yeah. as you're surrounded by these cars and us, <laughs> do you all drive? Is it uh, does yeah. a cash drive now as well? All of us, yeah. yeah. Oh, we're, yeah. All, we're all drivers. You're all drivers. What is your dream uh, car? As my insurance premium tells me yeah. every month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Definitely. So what are your dream cars? Are you kind oh, of God, yeah. in them or are you, are you looking for I, that I, thing? I wouldn't have two dream cars. One is actually out of production now and it's probably a throwback to my youth. I still yeah. remember the very first motor show in Birmingham. Yeah, back Birmingham in Birmingham NEC, back late, in the day. That's right, 8990. Yeah, yeah. I used to go every year with my dad. I still remember there was a concept Porsche 959. Yeah. That, that was a show. And I still remember it. So I still got a picture, some grainy picture of it, yeah. silver grey. <laughs> and it just blew my mind. And, you know, I know they stopped making them in the 90s. Uh, yeah. But if I, could, if I could ever have that Porsche 959, I'd love that. Yeah. In lieu of that, I'll happily take an Aston Martin DB9 any yeah. day of the week. Very good. <laughs> yeah, <that's it. laughs> I've always been yeah. a fan of the Aston yeah. Martins and having sat in one or two, I think it's just, just, a, just a beautiful car. That, yeah. that plays Classic. very well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's good enough for James Bond. Isn't Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> definitely. How about yeah. you guys? Uh, well, we were having this conversation the other day and I said, well, Whatever car I have, I just want my dad to be driving. <laughs> <laughs> she's more, she's not what car, what's her dream car, what's her dream chauffeur? Yeah, 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 yeah. Question, yeah. So you're, you're the best chauffeur. Yeah. So it's what car you're going to be driving yeah. in. Yeah. Exactly. I think we live by the Land Rover factory. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we've grown up just seeing all the newer yes. models of, of Land Rovers, Range Rovers up yeah. and down by our house. So I think growing up it's always been, oh, I want one of those cars. Yeah, yeah. So, the status so, car. Yeah. 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 Nice new, new end, you know, Range Rover. Would, wouldn't be too bad. <laughs> yeah, it'd be quite good to be driven in as well. Yeah. Oh, exactly. oh yeah. yeah, to be driven in, obviously. Yeah. Long wheel base and recliner seats <laughs> in the back. Yeah. That's the plan. That's what you want, yeah. Yeah, she'd probably get in the car and go, it's too high, I can't <laughs> drive in it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Oh. oh, I like my Bentley, but I've, I've, I've had friends who've had it and I think it's just nicer to be driven in it, to be yeah, fair. Yeah. Um, and I love the sound of the engine. But then to drive it myself, I feel very comfortable in an Audi. I love an Audi. Yeah, yeah, yeah very good. Very beautiful good car. cars. <laughs> um, we've been quite blessed in the in the fact that sometimes with his car, with his work and stuff, we get to drive nice cars. So yeah, yeah. it's been, uh, I think, Audi. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> well, you're always welcome here. You yeah, always absolutely. come around and have a look around. And yeah, we've seen some the cars, you. amazing cars, you know. Yeah, you get to see a few. So they kind of come and drive. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Try not to go too attached to them. 
I know, because they, they just leave us eventually. <laughs> <laughs> it's good motivation walking in here, like yeah, just finishing it's university. It's like, okay, this, this is something to work towards, yeah, these nice cars. <laughs> Anytime you're ready. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you're worry, ready you'll be the first person we call. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Fantastic. So that's been absolutely fantastic. Uh, I think we've got so much, yeah, I've taken so much content and so much understanding of the whole experience really so thank you so much for sharing yeah, thank you for having us really today. appreciate it yeah. no really really appreciate it sorry it's a bit nippy as well no 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 it's been much brilliant about the temperature so <laughs> no, no, it's been brilliant, brilliate. brilliate. Yeah. appreciate it yeah, yeah. 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 lights kept me warm yeah, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. thank you brilliant awesome thank you it was great to see you thank you for having us thank you thank you very much Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please like and subscribe.